who can do a lot with a little, run a campaign on a, on a shoestring and win a bunch of states and, and rise in the polls. You're looking for someone who can take what's going on in Washington and look at what on my campaign and see someone who can do a lot with a little. That's what we need in Washington, not just after the election, but we're going to need to have that before the election. And I'm the best person from a state which is a key swing state, from a region of the country which is going to decide this election right across the Rust Belt of America. We've got the programs, we've got the plan, and we can win and defeat Barack Obama and govern this country conservatively. Gentlemen, I want to thank you. I want to thank all of our candidates tonight. We also want to thank our partner tonight, the Republican Party of Arizona. And we'd like to thank our hosts here at the Mesa Arts Center, a beautiful venue here. Be sure to join us Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern for our live coverage of the Arizona and the Michigan primaries. Our coverage of America's Choice 2012 continues right now. John, thanks. Good evening, everyone. It's Anderson Cooper. Uh, welcome to special 360 coverage of tonight's big Republican debate in Mesa, Arizona. Let's take you back onto that stage to show you what's going on. There have been many, but perhaps none as important as this one. The four men competing for the GOP nomination. Mitt Romney's coming off three defeats, facing a stiff challenge in Arizona and Michigan next Tuesday from Rick Santorum. A lot of pundits saying that if Governor Romney can't win Michigan, he can't win the nomination. Rick Santorum's been on a roll lately since winning Colorado, Missouri, Minnesota, but the polls are once again tightening. New Gingrich looking to get some momentum back. The stakes were high going in, and it showed uh, tonight on the stage. As always, we're joined by our political panel. We're going to show you in a few minutes the key moments, the best moments, most important moments, uh, in kind of a recap in case you missed them from the debate. Uh, Chief political analyst Gloria Borgia with us, Democratic strategist Donna Brazile, Republican strategist Ari Fleischer, who is press secretary for President George W. Bush. Also senior political analyst David Gergen is in the hall. John King's there. Uh, Eric Erickson, editor-in-chief of redstate.com. A lot of people have talked to. Um, uh, Ari Fleischer, let's start with you. Uh, who do you think did particularly well tonight? Well, Anderson, I thought that it was a good night for both Newt Gingrich and Mitt Romney. They, they to me, had the best debate in points. Newt was like the old Newt that we saw previously in the debates. He came out and, and was affable, was thoughtful, was deep. And I thought that Mitt Romney was just regular, solid, steady, hit doubles uh, Mitt Romney. Uh, Rick Santorum missed his chance tonight. He had a real opening, and I think he missed it. Uh, Donna Brazil from the Democratic side, who did you, uh, what did you see on that stage tonight? Well, you know, the city of Mesa is famous for spring training, and I have to tell you, I don't think Rick Santorum was ready for the big leagues tonight. The spotlight was on him because he's one of the front runners. Mitt Romney had a terrific night, but Newt Gingrich is still the statesman in the party, and who knows what's going to happen next week. But Ron Paul uh, had his funny gene, and he tried to make the, the best of a bad situation as well. Uh, Gloria Borger is standing by uh, with uh, Senator Rick Santorum. Uh, Gloria, a uh, ticket. Hi, Anderson. I'm standing here uh, with part of Team Santorum, who came here to cheer the senator on this evening. Let me ask you the first question, Senator, which is, how did it feel to be the center of attention oh, tonight? I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, it was, uh, you know, you, you fight for that real estate, and uh, now you have the opportunity. And, you know, I, I felt like with, uh, with Ron on one side and Mitt on the other that, you know, they were smacking back and forth a little bit. But, you know, that's part of the process. I think we laid out our, our vision for the country and why we're the best person to, uh, to take on President Obama and, and the best person to make the kind of change that's necessary in Washington. But I have to tell you, Senator, that at a couple of points, it got quite heated uh, between uh, you and Governor Romney when you're talking about earmarks. And essentially, you seem to be calling Governor Romney a hypocrite. Is, was I reading that right when it comes to earmarks? Well, when, when someone criticizes you for earmarks and then goes out and at the same time that I was earmarking, goes out and says, you know, I want those earmarks and, 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 and goes to Washington, D.C. and asks for them, and then says we should have a process of how we spend money, and he describes the process about how we actually did do earmarks. I think the, the governor's just misinformed, and he's, uh, he's, he's making points that just simply you know, fall flat. So am I right? Hypocrite? Well, you know, I, I'm not, I don't like to call people names, but I think that the governor's uh, accusations are, are, are completely wrong, false. You, you also seem to get some negative audience reaction here this evening when you suggested that Governor Romney would be incapable of taking on Barack Obama on the health care issue because of his health care reform plan in Massachusetts. I mean, you, you say that a lot in the campaign. 
And uh, you usually get a very good reaction. Uh, you know, this was a, I think this was a pretty favorable Romney crowd, from what I could tell. But that's okay. Uh, you know, we're we're uh, we're in a we're in a, a place that he's going to do very very well uh, here in Mesa. But look. Uh, I think it does take the issue of health care off the table. I mean, uh, President Obama is going to just turn around and say, Don't, what are you criticizing me for? I mean, this, this is your plan. In fact, in some respects, your plan is, is to the left of mine. I mean, as I mentioned, Governor Romney's plan makes every small businesses of over 10 employees cover people with uh, health care as opposed to uh, President Obama's over 50. So in some cases, kind of some cases, his plan is actually more onerous on business. What do you say to those Republicans who say that you uh uh, are spending way too much time talking about divisive cultural issues, that they don't want to get into a culture war, and that uh, if you're the nominee, this would doom you uh, with women voters and, in fact, with independent voters. And you know those voices are coming from pretty high places in Washington. Well, actually, the Gallup poll says we're leading among women, and, we, and, and we're doing well. Uh, you know, uh, people care about families. People care about, you know, where, what, what's happening to our, to our, to our society. But I do get these questions, as John King tried to do on contraception and other things that are, you know, sort of outrageous uh, types of questions. And then the next question from the reporter is, why are you talking so much about social issues? So they ask, and then they say, oh, but you're talking about social issues all the time. Look, uh, I understand the game, and we're just going to go out and, and continue st stay on message about, you know, what we're going to do to make this country more prosperous build up uh, a strong foundation of our country, which which clearly is, uh, as, as, as I talked about before, we've got to do something to help uh, you know, strengthen the American family. And, and I'm going to continue to talk about those things. Okay, Senator, thanks very much. Hey, Good oh, to I see you. Team got Santa, I've got the yeah, microphone got here. Back back to you, Anderson. Right. Chief National Correspondent John King is on the stage with uh, with Ron Paul. John? Thank you thanks. very much. And Anderson, to respond to Senator Santorum quickly there, I understand the game as well, and I don't think it's out of bounds to ask a presidential candidate about something they said during a presidential campaign, but that's how the process works. Uh, you're right, Congressman Ron Paul is with me. And Congressman, uh, at the end of the debate tonight, you said the greatest misconception was that people uh, think maybe you can't win. You are the only candidate on the stage tonight who's yet to get a win. Came pretty close in Maine, uh, but when you look at the arena, Arizona and Michigan next, Wyoming and Washington State, then 10 states on Super Tuesday, to prove your point, doesn't Congressman Paul need to get a win? Uh, it would be nice, but uh, we haven't finished counting all those votes in Maine yet. So, but, you know, when we count up our delegates, I'm in second place. You know, the absolute allocation of delegates. So the delegates is the name of the game. But I can expand on this whole thing about the polling. When I'm polled against the Democrats and the independents, I do better than the rest. So, and, and you know, the Republican Party claims they want somebody to win. And, of course, you understand why I have appeal to somebody outside the Republican Party because the foreign policy is different. I have concern about civil liberties and I'm a fiscal conservative so I have a broad base of appeal so that sort of goes by the way and of course I have to fight to get that message out what was your sense tonight from your perspective of the most interesting or the most significant uh, policy disagreement or confrontation or discussion well I think the most disagreement that's clear-cut is probably what you were able to point out three guys here they say want to they want to go and and fight Iran and go into war and uh, and I have a different position and which is very legitimate very important important to me and some people sometimes kid me a bit and they say you know Ron if you change your foreign policy you might get more support but you know the young people that come to see me that's their biggest issue is the war and the spending and I work this in the war and spending it overseas and the crisis that we have and I had a chance you gave me a chance to mention that tonight I think that is key but it definitely is a different policy but when I can further explain it I can show where I'm closer to Eisenhower because he was restrained he got rid of the war in Korea uh, he didn't get involved with troops in Vietnam he didn't get involved in the Formosa Strait and I remember very well 56 he would not fight go to war of the Suez Canal so I really like it and he was a military man and I've been in the military the others haven't so I think in many ways I would follow some of the uh, advice of Eisenhower as well as our founders well let me bring you back to the very first question of the debate the gentleman's concern about the debt which is something you've talked about for some time as you know there are even many of those who say debt and deficit reduction two different things should be a big goal at this moment eight percent unemployment eight point seven percent in this state right now do many say at this moment though take it easy and go more slowly because if you pull too much money back you might hurt the economy too much you say cut a trillion dollars yeah. in your first year do you worry that could have a no, negative economic no, impact? No, because it's, it's a myth to say that 
right? If the government doesn't spend the money, it won't get spent. We're just talking about who should spend the money. When government spends the money, they make mal mal investment and they take care of their friends. When the people get their trillion dollars back and they spend, they're going to spend it by making economic decisions. After World War II, 10 million men and women came home and we cut the budget by 60 percent and we cut taxes by 30 percent and the depression finally ended, proving my point that the government shouldn't be spending money, the people should be spending the money. Congressman Paul, appreciate your time tonight. We'll see you on the campaign in the days ahead. And Anderson, you hear a very consistent message from Congressman Ron Paul. He does make the point. He is second in delegates right now as we move on to a more crowded calendar. The big question before us is, can he win a state? And we'll know much better on that front in 10 days or so, Anderson. And I believe consistent was the one word he used uh, to describe himself to answer your question, John, uh, which you asked to all the candidates. We want to bring in uh, some of our other analysts who have been watching the debate uh, along with uh, everyone else. Uh, David Gergen is joining us. David, your perceptions, who won tonight, who did well? Anderson, this was a showdown between Mitt Romney and, and uh, Rick Santorum on a very significant debate. And Mitt Romney was a winner by a significant margin. He came in better prepared. He remained on offense all night. He knew his brief. He was able to go on, on the attack against, against Santorum very, very well. I think he was a dominant figure in a hall that seemed to be dominated by, by pro-Romney supporters. On the other hand, Rick Santorum, who had had some terrific debates leading up to this, uh, seemed nervous tonight coming out of the gate, and he couldn't quite get into the groove on the economic issues. And in particular, it was interesting how Romney and then Ron Paul managed to make Rick Santorum defend himself as a legislator and put him smack in the middle of Congress. I don't think that served him well. One last question, Anderson, though. I think this did help Romney uh, in Michigan. I think it's going to help him on Super Tuesday. Uh, but did it help him looking toward November? I think that's a tougher question. There are a lot of women out there tonight on Twitter who believe that these candidates really live in the past, that they're men who sort of don't understand the women's rights movement. And it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, it will indeed. Uh, Eric Erickson, let's check in. Editor in chief of redstate.com. Eric, uh, you haven't been a fan of Romney all along. Do you think he did particularly well tonight? I think between Santorum and Romney, he did much better than Santorum, particularly in the first half. Santorum seemed to find his footing in the second half of the debate, but in the first half, he stumbled a lot. He was nervous, I think, anticipating the attacks, and the attacks came. I think Romney was very smart to get Rick Santorum to defend voting for Arlen Specter, something that won't go over very well with Tea Party groups. At the same time, though, I think we saw the same dynamic we saw in Florida. When Gingrich and Romney went after each other so negatively, Santorum and Ron Paul shined a little brighter in Florida. And tonight, I I really think Gingrich probably shined a little brighter than the others. He came off as the statesman that we haven't seen in a while. He had some very good lines, and he kept bringing everything back to Barack Obama. Uh, is it enough for him on Super Tuesday? Probably not, but he may have just locked in Georgia and Tennessee, which is all I think he really is expecting on Super Tuesday. Donna Brazil, to uh, David Gergen's point about a, uh, a, a women problem, do you agree that, that that was shown on the stage tonight? Oh, absolutely, Anderson. Look, I know the Republicans would like to make this a, an issue about re religious liberty, but for many women in this country, those who are currently on birth control and those who used birth control in the past, this is about access to reproductive health uh, issues. And so I think the Republicans came off tonight as being basically a blast from the past, not understanding that this is a, a women's health issue and not a, a religious liberty issue. Uh, Ari, do you, do you think that's how it came off, or do you think I think there are many who say this is a religious liberty issue. No, I think this is one of those Republicans are from Venus, Democrats are from Mars, and independents are from both. And, and that's going to be the jump ball of the general election. There are valid arguments on both sides. If you look at this as just a birth control matter, you're going to disagree with Republicans. If you look at this as a religious freedom matter and a question of government being able to mandate to the private sector how much you can charge for a product and telling you that you have to give it out for, for free, you're going to look at it from the Republican point of view. That's what campaigns are all about. Both sides have to make their arguments to win the independence. Uh, Gloria Borger standing by with Arizona Governor Jan Brewer. Gloria. Hi, Anderson. Uh, Governor, thanks so much for being with us tonight, and uh, thanks for having us in the state of Arizona. Let me ask you, earlier this evening, you spoke with our colleague John King, who moderated the debate. You said that if you were so inspired, you might actually endorse someone this evening. Can you tell us, uh, were you so inspired? I was really inspired tonight. I thought this was a fabulous, fabulous debate. Uh, so much so that now maybe I'm a little bit even more confused. I thought they all did 
fabulous. But now you have met with each of the candidates, uh, except for Ron Paul, Correct. I gather. Yeah. And can you share with us anything that they told you to try and tip the balance uh, in their in their favor? I know you met with Mitt Romney just uh, before this debate. Well, I think that, you know, it, it, and, and of course I understand that they come in and they all want to tell you all about their positives and what and where they want to go. And they were concerned about the things that I was concerned about and trying to make my decision. And so we discussed a, a lot of that back and forth and and tonight each and every